Well, we have some new warnings about a very different kind of threat that ISIS could pose to America, and that is cyber attacks. The terror group, of course, actively uses computers and social media to recruit fighters, but they're actually trying to recruit hackers as well. One British hacker recently tweeting this, quote, you can sit at home and play Call of Duty, you know, the video game, or you can come here and respond to the real Call of Duty. The choice is yours. We should mention that that uh, Twitter account has since been deactivated. Let's talk to Morgan Wright about this. He's a cybersecurity analyst and founder of Safe Flight, uh, excuse me, Safe Life. Uh, tell us about this guy, who he is, and right. why we should be so concerned. Most people might remember him as the guy who was arrested for hacking British Prime Minister Tony Blair's information. So right. he's already demonstrated he has the capability to penetrate sensitive government networks. He's very uh, wily with social media. These folks, all of these ISIS folks, are learning how to use social media because it's about the narrative. They understand about controlling the narrative. But now what they've put behind their kinetic capability is this cyber capability with $425 million at their disposal, which is what they got from robbing the Iraqi banks back about a month ago, a month and a half ago. There's, they should be taken and treated as a nation state and as a very serious threat to the United States. So they may be recruiting guys as hackers to help infiltrate the U.S. government. And also your concern is our banks, our infrastructure, absolutely. our transportation. How likely is it that something like this could happen? Oh, it's absolutely, it, it will happen. Not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And the difference with recruiting hackers is when you recruit somebody to engage in jihad and you, you bring them over to a camp, they have to physically leave the country. You get the best and the brightest. They never have to leave the borders of the United States. You don't get travel. You don't get passports. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Oh, my gosh. You recruit them. You keep them here. You pay them here. And they engage in warfare from the continental no United States. So they could be doing it from their mother's basement. And Absolutely. we might never know about it. How equipped is our government to do something about it and to try to track these people? Well, look, it's like anything else. You have only so many assets that you can put against. We were just watching some of the forced fires and stuff in yeah. California. You only have so many firefighters you can put out there, right? You have to pick and choose your fires that you put out. We, you cannot throw enough people at this. You cannot spend enough money to solve it. What you have to do is start taking out the leadership. And I'll tell you, quite frankly, places like Twitter or Facebook or other places ought to start just nuking these accounts, taking them offline, and not allow them to continue this narrative. They are recruiting well, his, because they have access. That guy's account that we mentioned, who, yeah. who tweeted that about Call of Duty, come on down here yeah. and, and join us in Syria, his account was taken offline. We don't know if he suspended it or if, if Twitter but they, did that. They'll just, they'll just create another account. And sure. So it's, it's a game of you know whack-a-mole. They keep doing it. Goodness gracious. Um, you know, they're good at social media, obviously. Absolutely. But that doesn't necessarily translate into the fact that they're going to be great at hackers at hacking into one of our major U.S. banks. No, but social media is a recruiting tool. So you say, here's what we're doing. The younger folks who have, are connected with their mobile devices, connected with their iPads, connected with their computers, it's a numbers game. If you recruit enough people, if you socialize with enough people using social media, you will find the people with the skills you're looking for. And it's like a job board. They're okay. looking for people with certain skills that can break into networks, that can break encryption. They're also building their own encryption. They're all trying to build their own secure communication networks. And they're learning the lessons from Edward Snowden. They know what the capabilities of the United States are. Well, what did they learn from Snowden? They learned what our capabilities were. They learned how much the United States really doesn't know. In fact, I remember one of the hearings, the NSA was put in the unenviable position of having to say that they didn't know about a zero-day exploit, about a, a critical way to get stuff. You never want to confirm or deny the, your information you have, and we were put on the defensive. So they're, they're listening, and they're learning, and they're building systems to make sure that they fly low enough under oh, the radar. Goodness. So they don't get detected. Well, then our, our companies in America need to do something to tighten up their security systems They better as well. start testing their security before the bad guys test yeah, their security. certainly, not just the government. Uh, Morgan Wright, thank you so much. You bet, Heather. Cybersecurity. All right, John, what do you got over there? A very tight